Welcome to the Revolution 11 video, Basic Configuration of Menu Beacons. Hi, this is Jim from Revolution 11. I'll be leading you through this video. In this video, we'll go over setting up a beacon for menu. They make a wide variety of beacons with different form factors and batteries. They also work with menu's G1 BLE Wi-Fi gateway. You can see a video about setting up the gateway on the AWS IoT core on this channel. We will be setting up these beacons so that they are broadcasting both Apple's iBeacon protocol and Google's Eddystone protocol. We will be using the Eddystone protocol so that we can use these beacons with apps developed with Google's proximity and nearby APIs. You can see a video about adding beacons to Google's beacon dashboard with the proximity API on this channel. You're going to want to make sure that you have downloaded the Beacon Set Plus app from Apple's App Store or Google's Play Store. It's also a good idea to have a UUID, that's a unique identifier that represents your organization, so we can use that for setting up the beacons to broadcast the iBeacon protocol. And we'll want to have a different kind of unique ID called a namespace that we'll be using to set up the beacons with the Eddystone protocol. We have a video on the best practices for setting up these identifiers on this channel. We are using the E8 tag beacon in this example. The initial setup will differ slightly for each form factor of a beacon, but it generally involves making sure the beacon is powered on. To power this beacon on, remove the plastic strip attached to the beacon. This beacon has the MAC address printed on it, so make a note of it as it will make it easy to identify this beacon if you have a lot of others once you open up the Beacon Set Plus app. When you first open the app, you will see a list of beacons in range. Find your beacon in the list and tap on it. The default password is menu123, so enter that and press OK. We'll be changing that in a moment. We are going to start by setting up the Eddystone protocol. Select slot 1. For the frame type, choose UID from the scrolling frame type picker. Make sure you have your instance ID and namespace in a handy note or app on your phone or tablet. You'll need to copy them so that they can be pasted into the instance ID and namespace fields. Then press save in the upper right hand corner. Now let's move on to the iBeacon protocol. Choose slot 2. For the frame type, choose iBeacon from the scrolling frame type picker. Paste the UUID major and minor into the corresponding fields. Note that the field entry has major at the top rather than UUID as one might expect. Press the Save button in the upper right hand corner. The third slot is set up with an Eddystone URL. Google has discontinued using this URL with nearby notifications, but it is still useful as it can be viewed by applications built to support it. The URL is set to menu site by default. You can change it to your own and then press the Save button in the upper right hand corner. The fourth slot is set up to broadcast TLM. This is useful to monitor the health of your beacons with Google's Beacon Dashboard. We're going to leave this one alone. 
The fifth slot is for broadcasting information about the beacon. We're going to leave this slot alone as well. Each of the slots has three configurable slider bars. The advertising interval, this is the frequency at which the Bluetooth signal from this slot will be broadcast. The RSSI measurement, it's a measurement of power used to calculate relative distance. And radio TX power, this is the strength of the signal this slot will be transmitting. You can adjust these sliders as you work with apps and gateways that pick up these signals to optimize the usefulness of these beacons. The last thing we need to do is change the default password. Return to the General tab and press Modify Password. You will be asked to supply a new 8-character password. Type it in and press OK. That's it. Your beacon is now set up and ready to be added via Google's Proximity API to the Beacon Dashboard. Now anyone assigned to the project with an app built to use the Proximity API can utilize the information that is tied to these beacons. Thanks for watching. You can learn more about what you can do with beacons on this video channel. See you next time. Do you need help getting started with the cloud or IoT? Contact Revolution 11. We'd love to chat.